We are recording. Nice. So, the normal question to start off, who is when and Fiora Flutes? That's how we pronounced it, right? A winner is my name, but winner? 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 I've, I've, I'm used to all kinds <laughs> of... <laughs> Most Americans call me weenie, so when is better. <laughs> <laughs> Who am I? Um, I think I'm a passionate person and a very stubborn person. And I don't like when people tell me what to do. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so in school, this was a big problem for me. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I never really knew what I was going to do or where I want to go with my life. And I thought then I was a painter went to art school and was kind of okay uh, but something was missing like uh, and uh, then I did like um, wall paintings like uh, uh, fresco paintings nice. yeah, yeah. to make a living and it's again it was kind of okay but still I missed some kind of fire and mm. this spark so and then I always like missed the fact that I didn't play a musical instrument right uh, a lot of my family from father's side are musicians. And as a child, I was always told I could um, like pick up on any, any instrument I wanted. But if they were going to buy me a good instrument, I had to go to music school. Mm. And just the word school there was like, yeah, no thanks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It really it put me off uh, big time. Um, so then when I was in my early 20s, I went through a keyhole in my life. I guess it was not very easy period. And I listened to music a lot, and there I heard there was this um, like a show on the radio every Sunday, and they like were playing a lot of music from around the world, and a lot of times it were flutes from mm-hmm. certain cultures, mm-hmm. and something struck with me with these instruments, and I could like sit on a chair and listen to it for a very long time because it was like um, I don't know something very simple, just with breath and a tube with holes, mm. people make music and mm-hmm. sounds. And I was like very attracted by this very simple rudimentary idea, actually. So that's how I got into it. And I started looking like what instruments I would like or would like to learn to play in the first place. But then it was very hard to find good musicians who played these ethnical instruments. Yep. And then when you start looking for the instruments themselves, you end up in like these horrible or not horrible, but like more, I don't know how to call it, like world shops. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, the quality is just not there. No. It's like nice to hang on the wall and just play for a minute. But if you really are looking for a special instrument, you cannot. Yeah, find you know it. they're not the real thing. No, they're, they're, no. they look the real yes, thing, but yes. they don't. They no. w- in, a, in an instrument, they wouldn't play like the real yes. thing. They're not built like the real thing. So then I got this thing where, like, where do I find a good instrument? And then you start to search online. It was like the beginning of the internet, websites, yeah, and stuff yeah. like that. And I ordered some things, and they were kind again okay. And I started playing. Um, it was a fujara I bought first from some Slovakian maker. But then I thought there must be these really amazing instruments, like that when you play, like you really know that you have something special in yeah. your hands. So I started looking for instruments like this. I went to these countries, visited makers, um, and I just couldn't find what I was looking for. Oh, okay. um, because I found out that in a lot of these uh, um, cultures, there's people making them, but they're not professionals. They're mm-hmm. they're like hobbyists, which is fine. Yeah. yeah. And so the thing is, like, when they after their working hours make ten instruments, with like um, more of a hobby mindset, then two will be very good. One yeah. they keep for themselves. The yeah. next one goes to the best musician or friend in the village. Yeah. The third one goes to the shop in the village if there's one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And at eventually the one you end up with is not like the, the yeah. best quality. And they don't produce much. So as an outsider, it's very hard to get good instruments. Right. Oh, so you then almost I need to know somebody. Yes, yes. You need yes. to know someone who's making Yes, and then still, it's, they, it's very hard. Mm. So I, I was actually astounded how... Um, in many cultures, it was almost like dead to yeah. f- this um, uh, yeah, cultural awareness and, and also the makers. Nobody now it's uh, there's a revival, right? But uh, like twenty years ago, it was like on a downhill still. Oh wow! Okay. And so I was astounded, uh, like it was how hard it was to find makers and good makers and good instruments. So then I thought I'll just do it myself. You know. Yeah. So nice. that's yeah. where I started. Is like just out of poor. Um, lack of good instruments yeah. and misery and of course I liked working in wood 
Yeah. And then I thought I just can give it a shot and see where I get. See where you end up. So it was absolutely never my uh, goal or idea to become a professional maker or to make a living out of it. It was just out of a need for instruments. So did you have any any woodcraft or any training in woodwork before? <coughs> the funny thing is that as a child, I always worked in wood. So right. I, I had almost no toys and I asked for real woodworking gear. Yeah, yeah. Love it. Uh, and my father would give it to me. And then I would build stuff for the house, like a uh, rack for the shoes or or, yeah, yeah, yeah. or try to build these things were w- which were in my imagination, which because I did not have technical skills, I never yeah. reached these goals. <laughs> But the, the drive was there uh, right. from very young age, actually. I was experimenting and I spent most of my time there. It was also like a shack mm. behind the house. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's very funny that as a child, you're there and you're spending a lot of time and then you go to school and they, they push you in a direction and you're smart, so you should go to Latin, yeah, in the yeah, Latin yeah. direction and then math and you get pushed in this direction and then you, you kind of like get... Um, maybe distracted or, or pulled in a different direction than who you actually are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then through, um, how, how should I say, hard times, you get to end up in your shack again. Yeah. yeah. And now I'm actually there where I already was as a child. So I actually yeah, I yeah. already knew yeah. who well, I was and what I was doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just made like a detour and I came back to it. Yeah. So I had... Obviously, ob- obviously not the, the technical skills there, but I was doing it already working in wood. And then when I was like uh, also in my early 20s, I followed some um, evening class woodworking, mm-hmm. nice. uh, which is just furniture because I wanted to make my own stuff. But the things I picked up there is absolutely not what I'm using here. It was just machine work. And uh, right. so but the working with wood has always been there. Yes. Yeah. Uh, to say it. So when was the when was the point where you were like, this is a thing. This is me now. Like I'm going to do this full time. I, I never made this decision. It mm. was like it. It it's was already it. made. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I was like. Um, then when I started with these flutes and and sounds and and looking for it, I was like a madman. Really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had also absolutely no money. It was like very very bad situation. Mm. Right. And I I really remember I was working in a, a shop without heating. Because I also had no money, it was like very bad. And in winter time, I remember like looking at my hands. It's this very horrible, like Walt Disney story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like it was like I had these cracked fingers from oh frost. Dear. Yeah. And like in the dust and the the, the, the snippers snippets, how you call it in English? Yeah, shavings. These things, the yeah, shavings yeah. of wood. Uh, I was standing there with these flutes and I thought, oh my God, what am I doing? This is <laughs> not okay. Yeah. I'm going to end up in a gutter with like yeah. 100 instruments. Yeah. And also like uh, people who knew me or my father was concerned, like, is this a good choice? And yeah, what yeah. are you doing? But I, it w- I was helpless. I could not help myself, but just making instruments. Just blind passion. Like crazy, yes. yes. Yeah. And uh, so... This went on for a couple of years, uh, and I did not want to sell my instrument because I knew it they were not good yet. Okay. So I didn't right, want okay. to sell them. So people started to uh, ask me sometimes um, to maybe sell them something. But I knew I had to wait until I was really happy because right. I was in this uh, self, um, self-education self state, yeah, or yeah, yeah. how you call it. And then slowly it started to pick up like I started to sell an instrument and then more and then I went to some kind of um, instrument market oh. uh, with some instruments and then I had like my first money which came in yeah, yeah. and uh, still it was like uh, absolutely not enough to make a living but yeah. at least there was some, some feedback and yeah. it came back and which was also important I should mention this there was this uh, musician in Ghent mm-hmm. who was a very good percussionist and he also played Fuyara and so and some other instruments, and he really like uh, put fuel on my fire. Then when I made a good instrument, I was calling him. Said, oh, "Listen," and I played on the phone. Yeah. He was like, "Wow, <laughs> <laughs> don't touch it anymore. It's good." <laughs> right. So I had some some kind of mirror there yeah. to, to share my enthusiasm. Great. And uh, so this helped me a lot that there was like this one person at least who was interested <laughs> in what yeah. I was doing, and it picked up from there. And uh, I guess it really started working. 
when a local musician uh, who's called Mirdin de Kouter, he's a flamenco guitarist also mm-hmm. from this uh, region, from a musical family, uh, de Kouter, so they're in the, the gypsy swing and the jazz. Uh, yeah, okay. <coughs> and he asked to play on his uh, album. Oh, and nice. I, I was horrible at the time. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, geez, I'm, I'm not like capable of doing that. And he said, it will be fine, just do it. Uh, we just need the sound. And so I sucked big time, I'm yeah. like, uh, but I'm on the album. <laughs> I'm sure it's not. <laughs> no, but, well, it was what it was yeah. at yeah. the point. And then his manager sent this to a music uh, TV program in Holland. And they um, kind of picked out the fact that there was this strange instrument on the album and they asked me to come to this uh, oh, wow. uh, TV show. And I was so ashamed. Like, there's this very good musician, Mirdin. Yeah, yeah. He's like a virtuous uh, guitar but they wanted player. You. <laughs> and then they asked me, this amateur the flute guy. guy. Yeah, <laughs> yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but I guess they were interested in the story and the fact that it was weird. Yeah. Uh, so they asked me. So do you think you suffered a bit of imposter syndrome? At the time. What's imposter syndrome? So imposter syndrome, um, something we certainly talk about a lot in the UK, where actually you are really good. You just don't believe that you're really good. I, I still suffer from that. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Because I don't think I'm really good. I, mm. I think there's just, I should be careful what I say here. <laughs> in the niche where I'm in, there's a lot of, there's not many people active mm-hmm. and there's not too much good stuff in my opinion. So right. it's not that hard to um, become something in it. That's okay. maybe how I see myself. Like I'm just doing something yeah. and maybe it's not terrible <laughs> <laughs> and it gets picked up. That's uh, right. my point of view. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So if this is imposter yeah. syndrome or not, that's up to you. I don't know. I guess so. I, I, yeah, I guess so. I guess mm-hmm. it's imposter syndrome, but I think the it's something I think a lot of makers do suffer from because it's, it's your everything, isn't it? This is your world. Yeah. Making Fiara is like your world. Yes, yes. And you, you know where your level wants to mm. be. So how long were you doing it before you really hit that level where you thought these are good enough? You know, before you phoned your friend and was yeah, like, listen yeah. to this. I think it took me about five to eight years. Mm. Wow. In, until I reached a level that I thought, wow, this is a really good instrument. Before, I th- it's more study objects, I think. And then, oh, on you go. Because to make a flute is not hard. To make a flute with sound, it's easy, actually. Right. And then to make a flute with okay sound or pretty good is the next step. It is kind of doable. But then the very small, like, step, or it seemed like a small step to get this instrument when you play it and you say, whoa, what's this? Ah, Or, like, I really want to play this one and not that one. That's where all the work comes in. Right. And it's this very tiny details that take you years to, to find out where they are, what it is exactly. Mm. And and it's it's like, um, I see myself, this sounds very tacky, but uh, like <laughs> a sculpture of sound, yeah. more than a, 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 a handcrafter or yep. woodworker okay. or instrument maker, yeah, yeah. because you're actually making a mold for sound. Yes. And the slightest change in physics or or a corner or even i call them mistakes in the right place Mm -hmm. give character to this um, how the air moves and how the sound moves and these very small details is what make uh, special instruments and this takes a lot of time and that's just repetition rep because there's nobody doing it before you there was there was yes. nobody to, to teach you. There's yeah. no yeah, you know, there's, you're working at there's it yourself. The, there's the local makers, and they, they go by their dogmas. Mm. Um, the hole should be there. You should use these sizes and this wood, and the wood should grow there. But I'm completely not from this uh, ground or this no. culture, so I kept freestyling and freewheeling, <laughs> going into all the dogmas <laughs> possible, which was sometimes very hard when you visit these countries. Mm. Um so I kind of like uh, went my own way with everything. And uh, this is just through trial and error and then following your intuition, I guess. I, I believe or I feel there's this common thing as knowledge and you can like tap into it. Yeah. Um, and I've, yeah, for some reason, it's like if you're in your zone and you're working and you're there where you should be and you're doing it in an honest way towards yourself, yeah you can kind of sometimes have a privilege to to open up for that. Yeah. To, to me, that's very yeah. brave to just yeah. go and like, no, I'm doing it my way. 
you know, I've got the conf- yeah. you have the confidence in yourself to do that. Or stubborn. Stubbornness. Yeah, 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 one yeah, of the yeah. two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So in that eight years, were you still working part time or were you just solely focused on a little uh, bit of money coming in and I'm yeah, going to do flutes? I was like, uh, in the beginning, I was like the, on welfare. <laughs> right. <laughs> on welfare and then part time, just like educating myself and mm-hmm. doing these things. And then I started to like, like um, going back and forth, like working with interim contracts, okay. which is like, um, like uh, if you have a temporary job, yeah, uh, you could work as an artist using such a contract, going to a bureau. It's like uh, being your own employer at that time. Right. So without being independent, because Belgium is very tax heavy, and right. as an independent, you really have to get your sh- stuff together. Yeah. Otherwise, it's impossible to to. Okay. We have uh, like a very. Um, yeah, it's v- very difficult to be independent in Belgium. So the jump, it really scared me a lot to yeah. because many people just overrun themselves. So I work with these contracts and basically it was like when somebody wanted to flute or if I have to play somewhere, I go to this interim bureau and I say, make a, like a contract. Right. And then I had to pay like the, the patronal wage. I don't know if you have it in England or in Scotland. I had to pay a lot of money to right. get it all official, but that's how I worked until... I could actually make the jump to being completely independent. Right, being mm-hmm. complete. So wow. what were you doing tool-wise back then? You know, because we look here and you've got you know, a whole plethora of tools and you've got your lathe in the background yeah. and you know, a great little workshop set up, but what, where, did it all, where did it all start? Uh, I just got it secondhand go yeah, to, yeah. To, because that's where the best gear is and then just started. You can actually, I think if you really want to do what you want to do, you can do it with... With the screwdriver, mm. it's I I think it's a bit of a, a excuse to say ah I cannot do it because I don't have the gear or I don't have the workshop. This is something which I did when I was a painter. Right. Like I thought I was a painter, but I didn't paint much because I thought I don't have the good workshop or I don't have the good paint or whatever. Right. I think if you're really passionate maker or or artist or creator of whatever kind. It, you will make it. Mm-hmm. Even if, if Picasso had one piece of charcoal, he would have completely yeah, yeah, used yeah. it. So and true. Yeah. So I don't think the, the the power is in the tools, but it's just in the drive. And then you can make it with a kitchen knife if you want. Yeah, to. I think that's yeah. great advice for anyone yeah. looking to start. Like just, start. You don't, just start. Yeah, just start and, and do what you feel you want to do. I think this is the golden advice never to do what you think people expect you to do or what you think people would really like. I think this is a, um, yeah, not the best direction. Yeah. Uh, because the road is going to be bumpy. <laughs> <laughs> it's maybe not, uh, not um, how should I say? Well, I think it's it's a hard way to make a living. Yes. So you might as well do it so your way. It's not a romantic story. No. Um, that's what the word I was looking for. And if you choose to take this bumpy road, better make sure that whatever you do, you really Enjoy. like yeah, what yeah, you yeah, do. Yeah. Because this is going to be your richness. Mm. And this is also going to get you through difficult times. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then secondly, I think you can only make really good and special things if you make them for yourself. Yeah, uh, because it's it's not selfish. It, it's no, it's on no, the no. on the border of selfishness, mm-hmm. but it's actually um, the reward. Yeah, like it's a lot of times when I make instruments, even if I know it's for clients, I always have the feeling it's my next instrument for myself. I'm right. making to play, and this also gives me the the edge and the nerve that I want to be really good because I want to make the best instrument possible. Of course, because it would. Be for you. Yes, you know, yes, you're looking at it as if yeah, it was for yourself. Yeah. Like yeah. every instrument is like made for myself. Yeah. And then there's this process when it's finished. Then it's in my workshop for a while. And I've noticed that there's the, this detachment where I can look at it like uh, it, like it's a present or somebody else made it. Mm. Okay. And I can really look at it like, wow, it's really cool. And oh, it plays nice. Like, like I have nothing to do with it anymore. Yeah. And this is very rewarding because it's then it's like Christmas every yeah. week. And this reward or, 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 or cycle of, of like um, satisfaction 
I think is what you need to first of all put the hours in because it's a lot of work if you want to make yep. a living out of it, and to not end up in a burnout because yeah. I think if you if I would have worked this much on something I wasn't hundred percent committed in and w w which was not as fulfilling I would have been cracked Burnt already. Yes, yeah, yes. yeah, absolutely. I think that's that's really important to and what you're explaining there where like do it your way. Yeah. Because it is, it's, it's a tremendous amount of hours. All the makers yes. we speak to put in yeah. so much time. Yeah. So what does making a flute today look like compared to back then? What What is the process? What woods are you using? How does it all look? Um, I have two ways of making them. So I started using hand drills, which are yep. like hand forged um, drill bits, mm -hmm. uh, about 100 years old. And I welded them on long rods mm -hmm. and wow. I was like uh, drilling the core out of trunks of trees. Yep. That's uh, in Eastern Europe. That's the way they're producing their shepherd fruits and so on. Okay. So I picked up on this. Um, and do you try and do a lot of that, look at the way they're done traditionally and recreate it? Or is that just something you stumbled on? No, no. I was like looking, first of all, because I started at Fuyara, I was looking like, okay, how do these guys do it? Right. What materials do they use? And so on. So I picked up there uh, and I started to make other instruments with this fashion, which were actually made traditionally in another way. So I started right. to blend uh, and mix things up and now I have like my hand drilled version mm -hmm. instruments which are which are like made from trunks which I can find everywhere yep. and also late work where I buy wood or, or use um, like quarter sawn yeah. pieces of uh, trunks to turn my instruments so I have both and this is also nice to go back and forth between mm -hmm. these two because I can do stuff with the late which I am not able to do by uh, hand drilling Okay. And then by hand drilling, I can reach forms and shapes and characters which are unable or which I'm not able to yeah, like yeah, yeah. make on the late. So it's nice uh, to have both, both. counterweights. Mm -hmm. um, but I use actually all the wood I can find and I try it out because there's right. a lot of dogmas again. This wood is good. This wood is bad. You should not use this. But I found out uh, sometimes all this advice is rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> and like sometimes the crappy wood has amazing sound or right. it has character, it, it has a vibe to it. And I think that's where like the, the, the experimenting comes in is that that's actually the nice part is that you can find out what works for you and what mm. sounds good and go. Not being influenced by yes, somebody else. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, you can, you of course... Advice can be nice. There's yeah. sometimes makers who say, oh, try this or try this, and you can try it out. But at least try out everything for yourself and yeah. make your own decision. What yeah. you think Decide is right. what sticks yes. after that. Yeah. I think this is um, very important uh, if you yeah, want yeah. to go the direction I yeah. went. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. You, get, you get your trunks or your branches and you've drilled them all out. What, what's your next step after that? First is like... In the winter, I go on long walks and look for trunks. I mm -hmm. select them individually. So some one can grow two kilometers to the east. The other one can grow 20 kilometers to yeah, the yeah. west. It's like very individually. So it's a lot of work to go select them. Mm -hmm. Then I cut them down. I take them here. Some I pre-drill when they're wet uh, because okay. it's more easy and uh, to follow the core because not all wood is easy to drill when it's hard already or dry. So does the core tend to be softer? Yes, every trunk has a core. Yeah. Uh, like there's wood which has a core which is quite wide and then there's other wood which has just a one millimeter core, right. but still it's a core. Yeah. And if you have the right drill bit, it can you can steer it so it can follow the ah, core okay. a bit. Yeah. And then it has to dry, of course. So most wood I use is dried for at least four years. Four years. Wow. Uh, and then according to what wood it is, how um, big the drill was I used to pre-drill, I will use it or drill it further and let it dry again. So it's it's all uh, depends oh, okay. there. And it's then I can... Yeah. So, so the trunks, which I don't know, the camera can pick it up, but which are there are not pre-drilled. These are elder trunks and they have a very soft core. You can see it's like... Yeah, you can actually see it, can't you? It's almost a very like light a centimeter circle. sometimes, the trunk. But the wood is still very hard. This is a very underestimated quality wood which grows here yeah. yeah so you wouldn't need to pre-drill that because no, the soil i can just the put it there put the date on it and yeah. it. Yeah. so four years you yes. would hold a piece of wood for yeah so the first instruments it was a problem because i didn't have dry yeah. wood yeah. so i went in the forest and was looking for which which has died standing there and which didn't have too much bugs in it or, or yeah. fungus so it was really you need a lot of stamina to yeah, <laughs> to yeah. start but yeah yeah, you need to hold on for a long yes, time. Yes. 
And then, so you've got your core through it now, and then is it all just a case of where all those holes are, how everything sits into it? It's all it's, it's mainly hand crafting. You talk a lot in your story and in, in the edition about sculpting it. So yeah. it's all hand yes, tools. Yes, everything's hand tools. Yeah, okay. The only machine I use is a drill and then sometimes a, a shaving machine when mm. I have very big trunks for fuyaras. Right. Like uh, to do it all by hand, it's just stupid. I would <laughs> just yeah. waste a lot of time. Yeah. So then I do the big thing, uh, the big uh, sides with a, um electrical um, plane. Yep. And the rest then, once I get closer to where I have to be, it's all by hand. So even, yeah, the, can, the camera cannot see it, but maybe you can show it later. Yeah. Even these ones, they I haven't touched it with any machine. Wow. Even this is just all hand. Work. Wow. Yeah. And then, presumably oiled and finished. And yeah, oiled and finished. Yes, that's it. And then what? Because these they, they break down into smaller sections, obviously, because you couldn't carry. Sometimes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And so what's that? Is that? And again, we'll get pictures of it later. Is that it's cork that's going into it, and that's all hand. Yes, even even the, the, the positive and negative section. Yep. The negative is drilled with a, a drill, of course. Yep. But the positive is cut with a chisel. Wow. wow. So yeah. even the round um, positive sides of these collapsible pieces, yeah, I, yeah, I yeah. cut them like first I go square, then I cut the corners, more corners, more corners. So I have like a really mm -hmm. um, controlled way of making it round and then I sand it. So it's it's very time consuming. Very. And that's why for smaller collapsible flutes now I use the lathe because this is, um, to make a living, this is not doable. No, 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 but no. But again, I really like it as a character. So for myself, sometimes I make it or when a customer asks and he wants to spend the money, then I'll yeah. make it like this. And and what what sort of time scale does it? Like your average, I know that you do a very wide range, but yeah. what your average, how many hours are you spending that's, on one of these? I think that's the most asked question yeah. Yeah. and it's the hardest to answer or maybe it's the easiest to answer. Uh, I have to say like 22 years yeah. Yeah, yeah, because the time frame which I can, the speed I can make good work now um, is, is ridiculous compared to the speed I, it took me 10 years ago. And it just comes because of all the time in these 10 years that I put in. All it's the like, experience yeah. you've gained. It's like um, if you would ask this uh, Eastern calligraphy master yeah, yeah, yeah. how long he spends to make one perfect sign. He, he can maybe do it in three seconds, but he, took it took lifetime. him 50 years yeah. to get uh, this shape in three seconds and yeah. he made maybe uh, 10,000 uh, bad ones. Yeah, see, so I'll, this I'll time, time uh, frame is very hard to give the right answer to. But yeah. I think that is the right answer, and it's yeah. the reason I asked that question, because I love that outlook that even if it took you, which I know it doesn't, it took you an hour from yeah. branch to finished. Yeah. It took you an hour because you spent yes. 21 years, yes. 364 days and yes. 23 hours to do that hour. Yes. Um, and I think that's something that a lot of makers do struggle with, you know, put, putting a value on their time. Yes, yeah. that's actually very difficult mm -hmm. because, like, many people have... Um, who are start from scratch like I started from below zero yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like you have this poverty complex yeah and and also because you really enjoy what you do it's very hard to put money value on it because when you're working you're not thinking about money at all no I actually I think it's it's a big um, trap if you are um, passionate to start thinking about money in your shop and I found a way to to work around this but we can talk about this yeah. later but um, I think this value aspect is very difficult. And the first step is to find your right customer who can actually, who is willing to pay you towards the value of your work yeah. so that you can make a living. This is the first step. And then the next step is to um, get it from big corporations or companies that once you get a bit bigger, you, you start to get in contact with them because they want stuff from you. And they're actually the, the hardest. The, the money thing is, is of course, if you want to make a living, is very important. And I think it's very important never to work under your price, mm. which you need to work. Yeah. And the first mistake I made was to look at other prices and to say, okay, my work is worth this, so I have to work towards these prices. And I immediately I had to um, stop doing that because uh, most flute makers are in Asia or, or in, in Eastern Europe right. and they work pff, way lower than, yeah, than, yeah, the, yeah. than we can do here. So I managed to find a price which is uh, correct for me, 
and which makes me able to make a living just just barely even and still i'm really like crazy more expensive than other countries yeah. but still I, my customers they understand and they're willing to pay it and they're happy with what i'm sending them yep. so i find a good balance there yes i think yeah. the big catch is right now is like the the past 10 years we have this boom of social media mm -hmm. and people are especially young people are a bit confused like uh, i guess what value is yeah and i think the the value exposure can be value of mm -hmm. course and it, it has value and likes and followers and i, I don't know what <laughs> it's valuable but you should never be paid in in yeah. likes or follows or exposure yeah it should be surplus to the price yes. they are paying you yes. yes it's 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 there with the package, with the package it should yeah. not be the package yeah you can't go to the shops and this and buy is bread. i think which is changing and they're trying to abuse this mm. and i think this is because i've i've been contacted by influencers as well who have absolutely no problem with what they're trying to do or whatever and then when they're in the music side some and it's mostly like um, they're much younger than me mm -hmm. And I get this kind of question like, hi, I'm this and this person. I have this much followers on TikTok and uh, this much followers on Instagram. Can we cooperate? I would like some instruments. Yeah. And then I'm like, okay, fine. These are my prices. Yeah, yeah. Tell me what you want. I'll c I can do the effort maybe to get it maybe a bit sooner than, than standard waiting time if you are in a project or something and tell me how we can cooperate. And then there's always this silence, silence. Yeah. because th for some reason they think they would get it for free. Yeah. Because yeah. it sometimes works with other companies, I think. And this is a very weird, um, I think, dangerous road for beginning makers is to value your work. And of course, exposure is important, but make sure to be never... Um, to give it for free. Yeah, never give it for free and never be like... Um, uh, how should I say? Be tricked into... Like... Peer, peer pressure almost just yeah. like yes yes that's like what it feels like it's it's the same it's the same idea like a lot of musicians were complaining about that they could play somewhere for free or for a small amount but you could sell your cds that's just this type of of of, of uh, thinking which is applied now on the social media stuff or somewhere yes, else yes. yeah so i think this is a very big catch and if as a beginner maker you should watch out and i think also on socials you should do what you want to do, not what you think the algorithm wants from you or what the, the, the company wants from you or what you, even your followers want. Do whatever you want to do. Yeah. And uh, even for me, it's very difficult. I get caught up in it as well. That's why it's I'm so saying. It's so easy to yeah. get caught yes, up yes. in it. Yeah. It really is easy. Yeah. I think that's great advice. So with regards to socials and, and socials kind of come hand in hand with marketing at the minute, yeah. how do you approach your marketing and your socials and stuff? I think most important for me is YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, the rest I don't care about so much. Right. It works, but I don't put too much time in it because you can get caught up in it very easily and it can sp you can spend a lot of time working for Facebook for free yeah. <laughs> or for uh, <laughs> so Instagram true. for free. Yeah. So I kind of like focus on quality. I'd rather put don't put out too much but put out quality. Yeah. And uh, I think right now my focus is YouTube because it still, after all this time, kind of works the best. Yeah. Um, and it's the most honest. At least you have a choice. Like yeah. if you use, if you choose, you can put a lot of ads on your videos and then you have the crap there also. Mm -hmm. But like for me, I refuse to put uh, for now uh, ads on my videos because I hate it when I look at other yeah, videos, yeah. I get like stuffed down my throat. <laughs> So I'd rather have nothing and use it like as a broadcasting channel, which is free of ads. Yep. And um, it works for me. So I think a lot of my work comes through YouTube, for yeah. like as well as um, videos where people can see me make an instrument or they can see me play. I think this is a well, a good combination. I'm yeah. lucky that uh, I can do both. And it's a lot longer form, isn't it? You can't really show how you make one of your flutes or how you you can't really show that passion in like a. 30 second clip no, whereas with youtube uh, yes, you can do it a bit longer i, I struggle with with all the, the very fast fed stuff of other socials yeah. that what i do it just it doesn't it's correlate not fast. no no it's, no, it's a slow it's process slow and process yeah. sometimes you have to give in and okay fine i'll make a reel from this video because somebody asks it and you, i'll do it yeah. but i won't put too much too much weight or time in it yeah. right 
So, yeah. And I, do you get paid from YouTube? No. 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 No, because I don't run don't ads. Don't so ah, is that, yes, is that yes. just how it works? Yes, that's yeah, how yeah, it so works. Yeah, so you only get paid once yeah. you run the ads on ah, it. Yeah. So, see. but the thing I think which is a good idea is Patreon, but unfortunately you need to make like um, uh, your own account there to be able to support other artists and it's a bit difficult for a lot of people and it takes some time yeah. and a lot of people then just don't do it. But I'm trying there now yeah, because it would help me to have some kind of return for all the time and, and money you put yeah, in making course. videos yeah. because it's a lot of work. Yes. People <laughs> never see what's behind it, but yeah. it's like, really, it's you, you will know. Yeah, yeah. It does. It takes it's well. a lot of work to make a t five minute video. Yeah. And I think there's also a lot of people that like I have no use for a flute. I'm yeah. never going to be able to play it. Yeah. But I'd certainly, if there was a Patreon, be interested in putting X amount in to see a yeah. really nice video that you made. Yeah. You know, and I think it, I think these channels like Patreon do allow you to do stuff like that. Like, yeah. And there's loads of people we speak to, like um, Maximus, just yesterday, you know, I've no use for a five-foot ice sculpture. But yeah. if you had a Patreon, yeah, I'd go and support that just yeah. to watch a video of him making yes, it. Yes, yes. So I think that in having those different price points and accessibility for mm -hmm. people is, is yeah. fantastic. But I think this still needs to pick up and there should yeah. be multiple like uh, um, platforms to choose from mm -hmm. who are uh -huh. more easy to reach for people who don't want to put in like 10 minutes to make an account yeah, just yeah, to yeah. support someone. So I think this will come and it will grow, but I think this, this way of like people who can tip you for what you do, if there should is a more direct way, which is also fine for the tax service, which is also yeah, who comes yeah. in, <laughs> that would be great because it does. It's not really there yet. But you're right. Like with Patreon, people need to get on to Patreon yes, first. Yes, whereas yes, yes. I think um, I think Instagram was launching something like that, like subscriptions on Instagram. Uh, I have to look into. So it yeah, you should look into yeah. that because the people are already there. Yes, yes. It's, it's very hard to take people and be like. Yeah move them on to that yeah, and then, yes, you know you yes, want them to come yes. across it so one thing that was really interesting in the interview and the story we've done with you is you're the way you manage your order book mm. yeah i've never heard anyone yeah. be yes. able to pull well, that off that's <laughs> what i was that? referring to when i said like i found a way around yeah. uh working around this um this thinking of money when you're in your shop and that's actually when i became independent mm -hmm. I suddenly felt it's for real now. Yeah. Like playtime is over, you know, yeah. because each month you have to make sure yeah. it's there. And did uh, you always do it this way or is that something that's more recent? What? Did you always do your order book the way you do it now? Or no, is no, that uh, like uh, I was explaining, like it was about uh, five, I don't know how long I'm independent yet. <laughs> I th anyway, about five or six years ago, I was in my workshop and I had this order list yep. and I was like making orders. Yeah. And uh, this, my workshop is a playground. And when I'm here, I'm free and I have fun. Yeah. That's most important for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I experiment and th the freedom is very important. And suddenly when I was following order, I w orders, I was working. Mm. And I was working on this instrument uh, already three days, I think. And I was tired and I made a mistake and I cracked it and I ruined like thousand euros. And I was like, fuck, I just yeah, ruined yeah, yeah. like a thousand bucks. Yeah, you start looking at yes. it like money. And, yeah. and uh, it was like, it was stressing me out. And um, I, I, I just put my gear down and, and put the light out and went to bed. And the next morning I was drinking coffee and I was looking at the door of my workshop. And it was like my heaven was turning into this stressy hell. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. And I was like, oh, this isn't, something's not right here. Hmm. Um, so then I realized... Um, I cannot make money here. In my workshop, I have to play yeah. and enjoy things and create a, and and yeah, play. It's yeah. just a playground. So what I do now is like when people order stuff, they end up on a list, but it's a free order. So I don't uh, take money in advance. They tell me I'd like this kind of instrument, more or less this tuning. And I don't give them a time reference. I just say there's a lot of people waiting. You will get a video when, when I have an instrument more or less towards your uh, requirements available. And I will send you a video. Probably it will be in one, two, three years, depending on what... Uh, but no guarantees. Yep. 
if you get the video, then and there you can decide if you want it or not. If you already bought it somewhere else or, or you're no, no longer interested, that's fine with me. I'll just yeah. go to the next one. And that's a very free way of working for me and mm. also for the customer because it's like um, they can just tell me they're interested, but they're not um, bound. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They've not paid a deposit. Yes. yes. Not, yeah. And this um, enables me to make what I want and then go by my list, like who's the next one in line and who could be interested in what I made. So I'm free and they're free. Yeah. And I think this is a very nice way to work. Um, yes. Also, because it's a musical instrument. Um, it should be a personal choice. Mm. Like it, I can make maybe three, and one will will um, like attract you, and the other ones maybe not. Mm -hmm. So when I make something, it would be very weird to tell someone you have to buy this now because I made it for you. Yeah. Because maybe he doesn't like the sound, or she doesn't like uh, the form, or whatever. Yeah. Okay. So in this way, also, when they get the video, it's like a free offer, and yeah. they can also say, "Oh, I want to wait for the next one." That's fine. Yeah. And so that's how I work. So it's very, uh, again, I use the word uh, uh, unprofessionally professional <laughs> or <Yeah>. professionally <laughs> unprofessional. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, it works for me and I think it's a nice way. To it's the first time I've heard anyone working that way and it makes complete sense. It does, so absolutely. Because does. it takes, like you say, this is no longer a place of business. Yes. This is your happy place. Yes. And the email and the video you send, yeah. that's the place of business. Yes. Just that little bit. Yes. And how has that transformed your work and your flutes? And it, it makes me, how should I say, this gives me the freedom to keep experimenting and to keep getting better and better and better and yeah. better. Otherwise, I would stick to what I know works and which will make my customer happy. And I would just make the same stuff as I yeah. did five years ago as fast as possible because I need the money. Yeah. And... Money-wise, it's not interesting the way I work, but yeah. happy-wise and life quality-wise, it's amazing to work this way because you get you keep the freedom to progress. Yeah, I have the freedom to make five crappy instruments because I'm searching for something and I just put them in my stove. Yeah, but yeah. it's fine because they were worth nothing anyway. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they didn't have a price yes, attached. Yes, yes. Yeah. So it's so one thing we often talk about with makers is like. How do you put time aside to keep experimenting or to keep building on it? But it sounds like that already covers yes, it for you. Yes, You're it's, always doing yeah. that. It's just then you have to make sure that at the end of the month there's enough coming in. Yeah. Uh, but I think the fact that you're working, not working but playing, enables you to work longer. Yeah. So if I would be working, I would have been fed up after five or six hours. Because I'm having fun, I can spend ten hours here. Yeah. yeah. I will work more. Like if I have a week where I can spend one week in my workshop without being disturbed, this is heaven for yeah. me. Mm -hmm. I'm actually happy I can yeah. be here because most of the time this is impossible because yeah. of a lot of other stuff which comes with being independent. It's interesting though, isn't it? Because you say you would work more, but it sounds like it's not work at this point. Yes, that's yeah. the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. The, that's, I think it's uh, like a mind hack. It yeah, yeah, it's, it's a it's mindset. Uh, yeah. And uh, so I think in the end, this way of working enables me to produce more and better stuff than I would do when I would be working. And in five years, I know I will be better than I am now. Yeah. Or yeah. my instruments will be better. Yeah. That's brilliant. And, and obviously, you are, your customers are super into that as well. It seemed, does it, has it affected your order book at all? Or have you actually found that it's gave your brand more worth? I have not even thought about that. Really? <laughs> it's just Good. I have uh, like uh, a lot, long, long list of waiting people, which yeah, is yeah, amazing yeah. that some people really like wait for years and years. Yeah. And I think it doesn't even make sense to send this one video still because like the the paper is yellow already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. But then still I send a video and I say, hey, if you're still interested, I have something here. And some people react like, Jesus, I thought you were never going to do it. But then they're really surprised that it comes and... It's uh, sometimes amazing how happy then they are. That uh, you get good customers to just you know hmm? happy to wait. You've got good customers. Yes, yes. Yeah. Patient. Yes, I, I think I like ninety nine percent of my customers are really like uh, I'm amazed by how much patience they have and how they appreciate and value your work. Then there's this one percent that's weird or crazy, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> which you have there's to deal fun. with and try to be as polite as possible. But for the rest, I'm really amazed by most people that contact me, like uh, like how much uh, like patience and value and respect there is for what you do. Yeah. 
that's a big gift actually because yes. otherwise uh, it would be impossible for what I yeah it would yeah. yeah it would and do you, how long do you think the longest person's ever waited <laughs> I don't know <laughs> still waiting yes probably, <laughs> probably <laughs> for at least at, at, yeah, I don't know maybe four years or something wow. five years four or five years wow that's brilliant that's, it says a lot about your work though doesn't it it says a lot about the way you work and your work to yeah. say that someone's willing the, to the wait. problem is that sometimes I have a lot of orders for a particular type of instrument mm -hmm. and then I find myself one year making something completely different right. but that's just the way it is because you're experimenting yeah, with that yeah or because thing. like I'm really into that now and yeah, like yeah. I'm in this trip yeah. and uh, yeah it's, I cannot change who I am so that's just there and yeah. who are your customers? Are they musicians mostly? Or it's a very wide uh, range. I think everybody. Everyone. I have like uh, uh, amateurs who just um, want something to just enjoy sound and are also not, don't have like the, 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 the goal of being the great musician. They just want to enjoy sound and play. And sometimes with rudiment rudimentary instruments, it's even like... Uh, a big value of them is sometimes they can convince someone like, wow, I, I can make mm. music mm. with only three holes and there's something there. So I have people who just approached sound wise or like just uh, hobby wise. And then I have like very high end professional uh, musicians wow. who sometimes I'm a bit starstruck that I have to All make right, yeah, something yeah. for them. So it's a very wide range and both will get the same quality. That's what I stand for. And right. I think this is a very nice thing to do to... Like, yeah, I don't make a difference in quality for... for yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and what about your range? You know, what, like, we're looking at the, the table there. How, how wide a range do you... I, I don't know anything about flutes or about, yeah. about this, this world, the musical world at mm. all. But is it a very wide range of different stuff you do? Is there a wide range in this world? How you do, do like the types of instruments? The different or? types, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it keeps getting broader and broader yeah, yeah, yeah. the longer I live, I guess. Uh, Good. Because you've got that time to play. Yes. It's, it actually, what I make is also what I'm interested in myself. Like, right. uh, I get a lot of questions that people ask, can you make this flute or this flute or this type of instrument? But when I don't play it, first of all, myself, or when I don't really like the sound, I'm not yeah. getting into it. And I will just say, go there or go there. Or this, right. like, this guy has good stuff. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, I'd rather make also what I'm really interested in. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and so, I'm oh, on your own. So the, the range is, I don't know, maybe what I make most are about five types of instruments, right. something like this. Right. And I know at the start, I mean, you say there you'd send people to different, to different makers. At the start, there wasn't many people doing that. Is there more people doing this kind of work now? Is it a good community to be part of? Or? It's still very small. Uh, and I think, but I've noticed, like I've made one video which is doing very well on YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I've had a lot of emails from people who've seen this video and this got them into flute making. Oh, okay. wow. So actually, I think it's for, with younger people, it's starting to pick up. Cool. Um, but still, it's very small niche. Yeah. And there's not too many people, uh, certainly not uh, professionally, who are into it. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And, and what about those young people? Is it something you've ever thought about, bringing on apprentices, mm. bringing on other workers? I, I get this question a lot. Yeah. Um, sometimes from the conservatory in Ghent, some people okay. were, because I was giving workshop there, and then afterwards people ask for apprenti apprenticeship. Ship. Yep. Yeah. Um, and also online, I've got this question a lot. But for now, it's not the right time for me, um, yeah. because I'm still um, developing myself. Yeah. And I work so... Um, Unconsistent time wise and, and day wise, right. that it would be uh, stressy for me to like uh, to bring someone else, bring another the schedule room. there and someone else. Yeah. And then also, the, the fun for me right now is like the I go collect my wood, I drill it, I have all the small steps. Yeah. And if, if somebody else would run crisscross in between, it would like throw me off. Mm. Um, and I don't know, do you think it would? it would turn it back into a place of business and yes. take away from the happy yes, place. Yes, because then I would tell somebody, okay, fine, there's the late uh, drill, 50 pieces of uh, this kind of wood with this diameter, go. Yeah. And he would uh, do the work. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. It would make sense business-wise um, because it would. Uh, this is a lot of work which is not necessarily the, the nicest to do or the yeah. most uh, like uh, rewarding. Mm. Yeah. But then, yeah, I don't know. 
I think at some point in time, I will for sure uh, share everything I've found out and know and, and my knowledge. But I don't have the white beard yet. Yeah, so yeah, I have yeah, to yeah, wait yeah. a bit. Yeah. So for now, I work alone. And I think this is the best business-wise. I should have taken Apprentice three years ago. Mm. Right. This would be most interesting me for, for everything. But person personally, it's not the right time yet. Right. Yeah. Okay. And that's that's totally cool. You yes. know, like that's I think that's yeah. I think that's actually quite admirable that you're just constantly and in innovating really. You're you're still trying to find your perfect Yes, work. yes, because yeah. like there's a couple of instruments like right now I can say, Okay, I'm happy with it mm -hmm. and some I'm still looking and struggling and, and finding things out and, and then like mm. I'm still not 100% happy and yeah. I'm looking for stuff. And if you, if there's somebody in between, this is not possible. Then yeah. you have to have set ways to work. Right. And then, uh, and also I think the sharing of knowledge is a very tricky thing as well. Mm. I think every all knowledge should be shared, but at the right time yeah. and also to the right person. Because I can search for one year and maybe find a very small detail which makes my instrument sound or feel in a way that people say, oh, I want this one. Mm. And I could hand it over to somebody in five minutes and they can just take it and run and produce the same stuff you're doing. Yeah. So I think this is inevitable and it's fine. Once you are established yourself and you are comfortable yeah. and it's the right time for you to pass it through and then it's fine, whatever yeah. happens. But you have to be um, a bit picky on what the right time is, I think. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, yeah. right now it's not for me. It's not. Yeah. Uh, then that's I think yeah. that's totally honest. Bec the thing, a uh, nice detail is that I've had people emailing me like, "Hi, give me your stuff." Like, just not even presenting their name, mm. <laughs> just give me your your like physical like plans of yeah, making yeah. instruments. Thank you. I'm like, first of all, who are you, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and why should I give everything You've I had worked that for? Had that, yeah. Worked yeah. for for ten years to find. I'll spend one day making plans yeah. print them out for you and send them to you yeah, like yeah, yeah. did yeah. you just bump your head i <laughs> know uh, it's, yeah. it's strange and then you have other people who feel okay who are um, more interested and already put some time in yeah. and i've had like three people who actually said like can i come over and uh, uh, learn from you mm. uh, and when they are in the area say fine just start in bamboo or pvc make 10 flutes or 15 flutes take your five best and come to my workshop Nice. Yeah, I've never idea. seen anyone. Uh, yeah. So I think that's a very good... They just want to see what you do first. Y yeah, yeah, yeah or, or they don't have the stamina to even yeah. start. Mm. And then yeah. it, it doesn't make sense to me to put the time in. So, so you want to put a little bit of a bar for entry yes, to make sure they yes, do something yes, so they're yes, genuinely yes. interested. Yes, because yeah. if, if they don't have have the, the, the stamina to first make 10 bad ones and, and, and put the time in, why should I put my time in th quite right. showing them more? Mm. Like yeah, absolutely. I think a lot of people are striving for perfection to start with. Do you know? Like, they're not willing to... You Maybe know. that can I be something. Also, many people just want stuff handed over to them. Well, there's yeah. that as well. It's it's maybe not as nice to say, but it's true, sadly. Yeah, there's not a lot of people yeah. that will be able to say, my flutes take 22 years to make. Yeah. Because they want the instant gratification. They want to, they want to come to you for the first twenty two yes. years to uh, just be l laid on them. I think they're just looking, like I was looking, and they're trying stuff out. And there's, it's nothing bad to say about them. No, they're just trying stuff out, and and yeah, it's a, uh, it's part of their search. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I think that's yeah. it. So you said, um, you said, you know that you'll find like one detail that you might be working on for a year. Are you actively searching for these or is it a little happy accidents? How, how do you come across It's a mixture. Yeah. Like sometimes you, your sound is not good or, or, and you think, hmm, what would happen if I would make this mm. round or make this wider or sand a bit here? And you start messing around with it. If it doesn't work out, fine, it's for the stove. Yeah. And sometimes you think, oh, I can make it better. So there's this active search and sometimes you make something and you play and you're like, what is this? Something happens. Yeah. And then the trick is to find out what, what made it do this way mm. or you have to cut it and look inside. Oh, really? Yes. So sometimes it takes a sacrifice as well. Right. Okay. Yeah. So how do you, one thing I'm always fascinated in because I'm terrible at it, going too far to one little step too far and ruining it. How do you stop yourself doing that? Or is that just also part of the process? I, I think 
<clears throat> it's part of the process. Um, but I think it's experience mm. comes in after it's just time. And at some point you will learn when it's enough. And, and I think the, the, I think you have this because you, it's a, you're, you're striving for the utopic, yeah. amazing best thing you can do. Mm. And that's fine. But you should, this striving should be in the whole, in all your things. Mm -hmm. And I think if you try to press it in one object, you will overwork it. Because, right. because you, I think you have to realize you, you're um, looking for some utopic perfection, which is impossible. And that's fine. But uh, this is what makes you overwork one object. So I think if you try to do the best you can at one object, at some point, if you're happy, it's also good to say, okay, now we go to the next. Mm -hmm. And this uh, small barrier, I think, just comes with time. Yeah. Because if you get older, <laughs> this becomes more easy to do. Yeah. Yeah. To, to uh, accept something for what it is and go to the next one and try to make this one better. Mm -hmm. So to, to, to shift your energy to the next one and go from there and strive to this utopic perfection this way instead of, of, Over of tunneling in, in, one, yeah. Yeah, in one object. Yeah. But I think that you need this striving um, because that's the passion. Yeah. It just should not be worked dead in one point. <laughs> yeah. So you'd be better finish, in your case, finishing one yeah. and then make the next one a little bit better than that. Then the yes, next one yes, lot, right? yes, that's yeah. what I'm trying. Because yeah. I've, I've had it too in the mm -hmm. beginning. Like I made the sound and I blew into it and I was like, whoa. And you, you can start to feel, be afraid of your mm -hmm. object sometimes. Like I cannot screw this up now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you, you're already weird and touching it <laughs> weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is this weird loop you can get into. Uh, so this is there. And sometimes you want to make it better and better. And then it gets dull mm -hmm. and it gets overworked. And I've had it many times. Uh, but yeah, it's funny that you ask because it has not been there for years now. Hopefully you don't do it tomorrow and I've sparked <laughs> something. No, no, I don't think so. Yeah. I think I've accepted, um, like I'm happy with 99.5. That's good. Perfection, That's good. something yeah. like this. And I r leave little room for imperfections. And actually more and more I start to enjoy imperfections. That's maybe... Oh, ah, okay. Yes, like before wood, when there was a little crack, I would not use it because there was this yeah, crack yeah. here. And now, if I can like make a small repair and like uh, sew it, yeah, yeah. Uh, but with wood, like yep. I put a little dowel there, I sometimes think it makes the object more beautiful. But yeah. in the Japanese tradition, yeah. 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 And uh, so I'm also evolving there. So it's not the absolute answer, <laughs> but yeah. it's yeah. just I'm thinking out loud. No, no, answer. it's a good answer though. That yes. the, I always forget the name of it, but the Japanese traditions fascinating yes you know the the bowls and then they repair them yes. with precious metal and uh, um ash and plum do it as well with a lot of they, they make um spun wood bowls and vases but they're wafer thin so obviously they crack quite, yeah, yeah not often but they have had cracked ones and just beautiful detail yeah. putting them back together but th the interesting thing is i'm doing this for sound already a long time like um then i think then you come in the next discussion what is beauty mm. you know yeah and you can say beauty is perfection or beauty is uh, symmetry. Mm -hmm. But if you take like a perfect tree, which is perfectly symmetry, like yeah. a perfect symmetry standing there, it would be a bit weird. Yeah. Yeah, it would. Maybe not very charismatic, but if mm. you would make like a small bend in it, then you can suddenly have something very beautiful. Yeah, and yeah, I yeah. think that's what I mean with a mistake in the right place. When a mistake is in the right place, it's not a mistake anymore. Like if you have a beautiful face and a little scar or something can make it like magic sometimes <laughs> yeah, for yeah. me at least yeah like it's like a natural mistake yes. isn't and it? then yeah. you get character and i think that's you need character to um be speaking about something beautiful mm -hmm. otherwise it's perfect and it's boring you know yeah barbie is, per is boring <laughs> yeah yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah yeah quite so i think this is for objects is is a important element but also like in the sound you can have an instrument who's perfect it's well balanced you have high notes you have the low everything's there there's nothing to say but it kind of lacks some character mm -hmm. or or something which is like uh, contrast mm. which is not there and then sometimes if you make a small mistake, like like uh, 
something not symmet symmetrical in where the sound is happening, it can sometimes give it this twist, which when you play, you say, whoa, yeah, I want okay. to play this one and not this one and give this vibe or this buzz mm. or whatever, just right so it, it becomes like your favorite instrument. And right. I think that's where the imperfection becomes the perfection. And that's like a characteristic that. that wouldn't be repeatable. It is. That it is, is repeatable, yes, yes. right? Okay. If you know what you're doing, it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a, so it's, it's very strange how these things work, but that's what makes it so interesting. And I found out that, for instance, wood, which was attacked by fungus, can sometimes uh, have more vibrations to it because the wow. structure was uh, mm -hmm. like uh, attacked a bit. And you have certain funguses who don't really deteriorate, deteriorate the wood, mm -hmm. like the blue fungus. Okay. And uh, apparently old violin makers were also like looking into this and there's right. this whole thing. And this is very interesting uh, stuff. Uh, I, I know uh, even a story of um, a violin player here in Ghent. He's very old now, but he used to win a very big contest. Okay. So he's, he's very, very skilled. And um, he has a very expensive violin at home, which is made by old maker. And for his latest album, which they recorded in the previous house where I lived because it had nice acoustics, mm. he brought this other violin. And uh, apparently it was a Chinese... Uh, like mass produced very cheap violin he once got from a gallery holder who gave it to him to just paint and put it on the wall of the gallery All right, okay. and he put red wine in it and something and then paint and I don't know what and then he said he was uh, curious and he put strings on it just to hear how it sounds and he, sounds, he said it sounds amazing really? so it was a lucky shot by a Chinese, yeah. Chinese yeah. machine and this he says I cannot go on stage with this with, because it would make me incredible um, can you say incredible, like yeah. uh, not credible? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. In this yeah, sense. Yeah. 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 <coughs> um, but for CDs, I always use this one. Oh, so, really? So, so the crappy, imperfect, like... So like when the camera's not on, yeah, it pulls yeah. the crap <laughs> one out. Yes, plays well. yes. So there you go. I think uh, that's where imperfection can be perfect. So that's, yeah. quite, it's, that's quite interesting, isn't it? Because a lot of what you... Well, everything you make doesn't just have to look good. It needs to... Perf form and yes. sound perfect yes. as well so is there a perfect sound that you're striving for or are they all just different and how do you determine that is it you know how does that all work i have set parameters like mm -hmm. this instrument should have this 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 and this if it does if one is lacking i will not sell it or right. i will search until i can get it out mm -hmm. and then there's this stretch in character which will always vary especially if you use hand drilled yeah. the, the more rudimentary you get the more stretch there is on the the character of the instrument mm -hmm. and there i i go as far as i can or i get the maximum out of what's available yeah and this is i leave up for um at, yeah at the moment actually mm -hmm. so i have my set parameters and then this stretch of character i always search for the maximum of this piece of wood or these diameters, or what's possible, or what I did in the moment. Right. So this is a variable. Yeah. So, so, so and that's just a variable that you've accepted. This will be a variable. I think that's answer. actually what's nice because mm -hmm. I never make the same thing twice. It would yeah. be very boring otherwise. So this variable, it's all like characters. If you have a classroom of ten children, you cannot say this one is better. This is a better child than this child. Yeah. This one has. Th is maybe a bit more beautiful. This one is a bit smarter. This yeah, one, yeah, yeah. like to say it very bluntly, yeah. but they're all equally valuable mm -hmm. in my eyes, and you can love them each like 100%. Yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you mean. That's yeah. how you can look at instruments in the same fashion. Mm -hmm. And who am I to say this one is better than this one because somebody else might have a different feeling and mm -hmm. will choose this one? So I've kind of let go of. of um, my own determination of, of like what I think is the best one, I will have it, yeah. but I will leave room as long as my set parameters are there, right. what the instrument should have. And all the rest is character in the instruments. Right, so as long as it fits in this bracket, yes. you're happy to yes. present it to a yes. customer. Yes. And are these customers that are on your waiting list, are they, do they kind of give you a description of exactly what they're after and then you try and match no, no, to them? like they give me a description like I would like something like this or like this and right. when I've made something which goes in this direction I offer it to them right. and then they can say Then it's their choice Yes, yes Perfect And how often do you play like 
professionally? Like, what's your balance? How you mean for like uh, perform or yeah, like uh, as studying or? Yeah, either. Both. Both. <laughs> this is difficult. Um, it's like some periods I play a lot, mm -hmm. also at home. Some periods are more like uh, focused on the making, and it just goes back and forth. Um, most of the times when I have uh, projects running, where I know I will have to record in two weeks or I have to perform in one month, I tend to play more towards that. Mm -hmm. And then usually when it's finished, it kind of slows down and I start to focus more on the making and so on. Yeah. But I don't play enough mm -hmm. or... or, or I don't have enough um, character to force myself to play each day to to say or to really call myself a musician, although I, I think I am. Yeah, <laughs> right. yeah, you definitely are. So I'm struggling with that yeah. because in my mind, a real musician should play every day and practice and get better. And in this sense, I'm really lazy. But then again, what I do works, not always, but can work. And so... It's yeah. it's it's um it's an ongoing question, yeah. <laughs> but still also I think if I'm here and I'm making instruments, I'm playing as well. So I'm testing instruments. Yeah. And here. So this kind of yeah. So although that's not playing as such, you I are. Think, I think still it's, there. It, yeah. it overlaps, and this yeah. make makes you your you never lose touch with what you're doing. Yeah. It would it's not the same as I would travel and not touch an instrument for two months. This would set me back. Yeah. But the fact that I'm like in sound every day here making testing or just playing and, and practicing mm -hmm. it keeps you in the moment and i think both are equally valuable yeah yeah i, I think yeah. i think that sums it up quite and as you say you're, you're all you've always got your hands on them you're always mm -hmm. you're always testing the notes as you yes. go so what have you got coming up what's going on at the moment what's what's your big projects at the moment that you uh, want to tell people about? right now i'm actually trying to get as much instruments made as possible. This is my goal for this winter because I was set back because of a lot of stuff and other project and personal things last year. Yep. And like m my order papers, they're not books, yeah. <laughs> they're <Yeah>. piling up. <laughs> so I'm really looking forward for the next uh, half year to just make instruments. Yeah. And in between, I will be doing recording work for um, a dance company. Nice. Yes. Uh, I'm not going to say too much about it no. because it's not, yeah, they don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, it's, a, it's a big production. I will record certain instruments I made for the soundtrack. Nice. And I'm also working on a, a triple A game uh, soundtrack. Oh, cool. Um, this goes over many years, and but I cannot tell anything because I no, signed a, an NDA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so this is going on. And then for the rest, we will see. Like, I was uh, in a performing more before the corona pandemic mm. hit mm. and yeah. i was like starting to get on a roll and it and like crushed stopped. everything yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and now I, I didn't restart like the actual performing um, so i'd like to look into to finding a way to perform more mm -hmm. uh, just physically because um, this is a very good motivation for me to play when i yeah. know i have a performance live audience performance like in three months um Make sure I'll play every day because yeah, yeah, you yeah. don't want to just and bomb. Do you travel a lot or is it always just in this area? Um, right now, I don't travel a lot, but of course, when you perform more, then there's a lot of traveling. traveling. And, yeah. uh, so that comes with it. Um, but right now, n it looks like next half year will be quite, quite. Well, not here quite. and uh, <laughs> just going to a studio or um, a room where we, or like a chapel where we record yeah. mm. to record the, the stuff for these projects. But uh, that's how things look. That's Good. Exciting. And have you got enough wood? Because it's four, <laughs> it's four years, isn't it? I've so got enough wood. To yeah. This is just my shop, but in my actual house, it's filled with wood everywhere. Yeah. Like uh, even the, the hallway to my bedroom is filled with <laughs> trunks, <laughs> with fuyara drying. Wow. You see it in so your sleep. You see it yeah. in your sleep. It's just yes. wood. <laughs> well, it's nice to, yeah. if, to live in between. And my girlfriend, uh, she... She's okay with it. So she yeah. understands. Yes. <laughs> Good. Sometimes you get like, if you have to go to the bathroom at night, you get the scratch. Ah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's when you Good. know you're really it's living it. Your yes. passion. Yes. And and how important do you think having these other strings to your bow are for your business? You know, having the the supplement of having the game soundtrack, the dance company. Does that all take the pressure off of selling flutes? How does that? I no. It's actually. I think it's all one thing. 
Yeah. I, I don't think one thing is more important than the other because because I have, I'm asked for a project like this sometimes I will make a different instrument because I hear a different sound that could fit mm. this project so I'm making other things and this gave me the idea to make other instruments for customers and so it's one blob yeah. and I don't think one is more important to the other however it would be nice to get more like these recording jobs because I really enjoy them mm. because um, like right now it's I'm left very free so when I do these recordings and I found out that I really like, uh, you like working this stuff. way yes yeah, yeah. And did you ever go back and do any music school or anything like that? No, it's just I, all been self-taught. Ten years ago, I, I almost went to music school to learn to read notes because I don't even read notes and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, but um, I really gave it a good thought. And then I was like um, looking at who I was and how I approached things. And then what music school would contribute to that. Mm. And I suddenly saw that it would be more of a pain mm. yeah. or more of a... Um, it would make things more difficult because I would understand too much what I'm doing mathematically or music-wise. Ah, okay. And I think my richness is because I'm I approach it like a child or like very yeah yeah like uh, um, kind of solve your own problem sort of experimental yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. for yeah. me it's like uh, I if 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 a composer makes some kind of track I put on a headphone I take an instrument and it just comes you know you you play yeah. And I think this thing is something apparently which classical musicians have issues with because they're trained in a different way. Too rigid. Yes, and they need the the score there yeah. or, or or the, and so so my handicap is actually a strength that mm. that's the only thing I can do, but I'm comfortable there and I can take an instrument, go on stage, have no clue what I'm going to do. And still enjoy, and hopefully it will come. Sometimes it doesn't. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. sucks very bad yeah. if you're there. <laughs> but I think if you have uh, some confidence and experience, it works, kind yeah. of. So I chose not to to bring math and my other brain half into the mm -hmm. story because yeah, I thought it would take uh, the fun away a bit for me. Yeah. yeah. That's interesting to hear. Yeah, that is interesting to hear. And I think that's quite... Um, quite self-aware to know to do that yeah because it, it feels it feels like if you did go that way you did go you'd never be able to unlearn that no nope. it would almost be yes. a hindrance yes straight yes. away you know yeah. there's a i brought it up a couple of times speaking with other people there's a tactic for certainly when you're conceptual and something engineering drawing or product design yeah. where you draw an old dirty paper that's got other sketches on it yeah because if you just look at a blank piece of paper yeah you start thinking about all the other things. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that, that's that's quite interesting. Yeah, actually. I, I think it's 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 the the innocence, like a child drawing, can be beautiful because it's um, completely free. Yeah, and once it gets boxed in, or or once they they should I say try to adapt to expectations or or, or rules, the freedom gets like hacked in a way. Mm. And uh, I did not want to do this to myself because it was more fun for me this way, and I think also. It's now if I play music, it's really true. It's not because I know it's good. It's because I feel uh, now this sound fits this moment. Mm. You yeah, know? okay. And this is something different than knowing like um, in this key, this uh, interval will sound nice. With uh, I don't yeah, want to have yeah. this approach at all. Yeah. So it's a handicap in a way. But I think this handicap is my strength that yeah. right now... Yeah, they can just send me stuff and I'll do whatever and, and it apparently works. they're happy with it. Yes. Good. Hey, if they keep yes. paying the bills, they must be happy. Yes. So I wanted good. to ask about how you ship your flutes because obviously you ship these around the world, yes. I'm guessing. Yes, they're going everywhere. Amazing. Sometimes to very weird places. Yeah. Like, yeah. Jesus, how do they even <laughs> manage to yeah. find me? And uh, I ship them in PVC tubes. So I, okay. I use like... Um, for plumbing, plumbing uh -huh. yeah, yeah. the very thick PVC tubes. And then, of course, because my flutes have weird shapes, I, I heat treat them and I, oh, I, I like bend them. Oh, you bend the PVC tube yeah, to, to the, the, right? the, the, the shape of the flute. And then I pack the instrument, of course, first in paper, then in bubble wrap. And then in also the mousse for, um, who protects the, the plumbing for the cold. Oh, yeah. Like oh, yeah, yeah, the insulation. Yeah, yeah. yeah lagging. And this way, the flute is actually floating in the tube. 
So then DHL can misuse and throw <laughs> around whatever yeah, they want yeah. because it's it doesn't <coughs> hit any uh, side. Yeah. And uh, so this works perfectly. Yeah. That's a really clever way. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, yeah. it's the best way. Did you just come up with that? Did you just think, you know? It's a natural. natural Another yeah, problem yeah. that needs solved, doesn't yeah. it? Yes. So how so far have your flutes gone? Where's the, you say weird places, is it everywhere? So I, I once like got a, a notification from my bank that they didn't, uh, want to accept like a uh, money deposit from Colombia. <laughs> 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 and like usually my customer had to send like this face idea no to show that he's not some kind of drug uh, <laughs> thing. So this was kind of embarrassing because he was a doctor or something. Yeah. yeah. So sometimes in weird regions where you would not expect uh, flutes to go, but most go to uh, Asia or uh, United States. Right. That's uh, your biggest, yes, customer. Your biggest yeah. customer sides. Yeah. Well, that that's, I mean, we're, we're an hour and 20 in already. That's been a fantastic insight into your world. Yeah. Kate, you've usually got a great question that sparks some conversation around now. Yeah, like what advice would you give your younger self? My younger self? I don't know. Knowing what you know now. I think all the things I already said. Yeah, I I have, you uh, have said yes. a lot already. Yeah. I think all the pointers I, I would give to starters, I, I would say the same thing. But for the rest, I don't know. I, I would have to. I would have to think about that. Yeah, which yeah. I just can't. It yeah. seems like you've you've done it your way, though. Yeah. You've just done it your way, and you've landed here, regardless of how hard it was to start. Yes. And now you've got what you describe as a happy place, not yes. just a business. Yes. And that seems to be the important thing, doesn't it? Yep. It's still. It's still. Um, you. I feel that, like in society doesn't like places like this no. and uh, you're going against stream uh, more and more actually so it's very hard to keep uh, it pure mm -hmm. and at some point you're forced to to kind of like have a good bookkeeper and go into the whole business thing but that's then you leave it up to them yeah as much as possible and you stay where you are and you yeah. because yeah I, I would not be able to do both for for myself so in a way, you have to adapt to where you're living and, and, and to follow the rules and, and to m make sure you don't end up in some kind of weird trouble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's, it's not easy. And sometimes it's, uh, it's a lot um, because you have to split up your focus. Mm -hmm. I think that's what the most difficult for me is like the, the doing your emails, then part bookkeeping, then playing music. You're wearing all and the hats, then you yeah. then um, going um, take pictures of your stuff for for socials. Then uh, uh. Yeah. making videos, talking <laughs> to customers again. Yeah. Then there's social life, <laughs> and then there's work, and then making instruments, experiments. And they're sleeping in there somewhere. Yes, <laughs> yeah. find wood. And so this yeah. is uh, it's a lot as a one man business to attend all these things and do it well. But then again. If you make sure you're not working but playing, then you can put in the hours and it's fine. You can always find a reason to come back here because yes, this yes. is the enjoyable yes. bit. Brilliant. Even even in difficult times, like when the, the pandemic hit, it was amazing to have this workshop mm. because like I was so thankful, like, wow, I can just be here and, and work yeah. and do these things and, and still like continue and make people happy and myself happy. And yeah. So and did, did work slow down at all for you through the pan? Obviously the performing did. Yeah, performing just fell away. And then also I had no more uh, customers here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I was forced also to close down because I have a, a, um, like a, a room upstairs with instruments uh, mm -hmm. like that are finished. So this is a shop and I could not uh, accept customers anymore. Uh, but then online I found out that Many people right now are hesitant. So, so especially people in Europe who have like very like the the big expenses now yeah. for heating and stuff like that. Yeah. So I found out that a lot of people right now are starting like Ugh, I don't know if I can spend the money. But then, if you have a broad audience or broad um, uh, how should I say customer base, customer yeah. base, yeah, base, then still it doesn't really matter because there's enough. And there's yeah. still enough people like in the US who don't feel it right now as much as we do in Europe, yeah. who will buy stuff more than... So I think this is then the way to go as wide as possible. Yeah, you've got a really good yeah. reach of customers. Yes, if yeah. I would be a dependent on, on French customers only, I would be screwed right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 And, and equally in the UK, you know, we notice with the, the book sales, just 
although it's only eighteen pounds, you know that's eighteen pounds. But if your gas and electricity has gone up yep. forty pound that month, yep. that's eighteen pounds you definitely don't have. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. I think we've covered loads. Unless there's anything you'd like. To yeah. Is there anything add? you want to talk about? Is there anything you want to? I, th I think I already talked enough. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's been brilliant. Let's wrap. So, thanks yeah, again thank so much so for your much. time. I know we crammed welcome. this one in. Yes. And you got to watch the football this afternoon. Yeah. yeah it's, what was it's, the score? It's. I don't want to <laughs> <laughs> We didn't bring that one up then. Good. <laughs> brilliant. Okay. No, I'm not really into football that much, but like these big games, I kind of enjoy it and they're, yeah. they're kind of uh, relaxing in the week. I thought yeah. that, yeah. Yeah, yeah brilliant. Well, okay, thank you. fantastic. Good. We'll wrap yep. up. Thank you so much. <laughs>